My name is um, Heather Gage. I am your division director for uh, the Division of Learner Support at the New Hampshire Department of Education. And I just want to wish you a good morning and welcome to the first annual Every Student Succeeds Act Summer Leadership Summit. Welcome, everyone. The, um, the New Hampshire Department of Education also, and we really sincerely uh, mean this, a heartfelt thank you to Southern New Hampshire University for, and, and specifically the president of the University College, Dr. Patricia Lanat, uh, for serving as our host and our food sponsor, just in case anybody's wondering how we were paying for food. <laughs> so um, we really want to give them a big welcome, a big thank you. I would really be remiss if you'll allow me um, to, if I did not thank our amazing team at the New Hampshire Department of Education that I have the privilege of working for every day. Um, they are dedicated, um, have, have dedicated countless hours um, to this conference and all of its content. Can we give them a hand as well? Would you stand up? And every one of you have, has this kind of person in your school district, right? You have that person that just goes above and beyond. You don't even have to ask them. They know what you need before you even ask for it. Um, and that person for us, especially for this conference, is Alan Desmond. So now I want to know who's in the room. So just tell me if you are a business administrator. Raise your hand. Proud, proud, okay. If you are a superintendent or assistant superintendent. All right, welcome everyone, awesome. What about a grants program manager? Nah, there we go, awesome. Great, great, great group. Um, educator, classroom educator, in the, in, working in the classroom. All right, we've got some of those. If you're just an educator in general, Everybody should raise their hands. <laughs> Are you a learner? Raise your hand. That's good. That's fantastic. So tell me, what is the most important role that you think out of everything that I said? What's that important role? Speak up loud. Learner. Learner, right? So when you come into a conference like this, we hope that you'll be open-minded. We hope that you, because we all believe that we're learners too. So we want you to help us understand your challenges. We want to, uh, to understand what your successes are. We want other school districts to understand that. So we hope throughout this conference, there won't be a, you know, a sit and get kind of thing that we know doesn't work in situations like this. We want to be a conversation. We want to learn from each other. So we hope that you will continue to, to let us know those kinds of things. Okay. So as leadership teams, you represent an amazing diverse, amazing diverse communities through geography, culture, size, and resources. The one thing that is consistent across all of your districts is the ability that you, each of you have as individuals and as teams to impact change. I know this is true because I'm looking out at these tables and I'm seeing people I know at each table and I know the impact that you're having each and every day. And it is extremely humbling to be before you and I thank you for the opportunity. We need to create a place and provide a space to ensure that every student succeeds and I thank you for your participation in that. So to kick off our event, I would like to introduce Sue Penny Bergman. Uh, she's a change maker and the chief inspiration officer at Learning is Contagious. Isn't that the best name of an organization? <laughs> Learning is Contagious. As, as chief inspiration officer, I want that title. I really do, right? Um, speaker, trainer, consultant, and mindset and empowerment coach, Sue combines over 25 years of teaching experience and a dash of humor with best practices in education to present engaging professional and personal development workshops all over the world. Please help me welcome Sue. So if you're excited to be here today at the first annual, I love how you planned that seed, conference, convince me that you're excited. Well, the Bureau of Wellness has an excellent day planned for you. I am so excited to be a part of it. I was 
was thrilled when Alan contacted me at our Educators Rising New Hampshire conference last year, uh, of which I was the state director, and said, hey, I'd love to have you come and speak at our first conference. So here I am. I do like to walk around, so I hope that's okay with you. Um, so I have to play off the name Penny. I hadn't been using it. It's my maiden name, and I thought, what am I doing? I talk about change constantly. So I need to embrace the penny. Of course, my parents were thrilled. And so the title for our talk today is Be the Change. It just makes sense. So um, my bio in the program book is more of an experience or a story. Uh, this is more of a history, and of course, I can give my resume if you want it with details, but but some things I've been fortunate enough to, to do and be um, over the past 25 years, taught a variety of grade levels as a classroom teacher, enrichment coordinator for a school district, uh, writing coach, uh, literacy interventionist, and then I had been doing professional development, and I loved it, and I took the leap. I took the leap four years ago. Boy, my husband said, how are you going to do that? You're going to leave the school district nice and safe. And you're going to just jump. Yep, jumped. But guess what? The parachute caught me. How many of you have jumped? You've taken a leap before, and there's been a parachute. You've had to have the faith, though. Okay. It's important for our growth. So that has led me to be able to do stuff like this. Uh, education consulting for schools and districts, and train the trainer for businesses, Mindset coach, and honestly, I'm, I'm now one of those people that I used to say, that's a really cool job. Now I have that. I just, my voice is shot because I just got back, are you ready for this? From Europe, teaching growth mindset and vision boarding and, and fitness on a wellness cruise ship. Everybody go, oh, you poor thing. And I got paid to do it. Seriously. If you told me four years ago that would be my life, I would have said, that's really cool. How the heck is that going to happen? So have faith and grow your dreams big. Focus on what you want and not what you don't want. Um, again, Professional Board of Educators Rising. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. And if anyone needs a justice of the peace today, I'm here to help. So I just let me know. So I want to talk to you about legacy. So much of what we do as educational leaders is transactional. We have tasks, and we have forms, and we have structure, and we have schedules, and we have people to manage, and things to do. But so much of our role as educational leaders is relational. And when we get down to it, what's more important? The relational or the transactional? Truly, speak from the heart, the relational, right? The relational. And I, and I believe truly with my heart, that is where we're coming from. You are in the people business. We're in the people business. So if you were an entrepreneur and you are running your business, your school, your district, what, your department of education, whatever that is, the relational piece is what people are gonna remember. And so that's why I wanna talk to you today about your legacy. Just out of curiosity, has anybody Thought, and I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to call you out, but have you thought about what you want that to be? Anybody, just a little wave of hands. Okay. So getting clear and specific on what you want your professional legacy to be and your personal legacy to be, and sometimes those crisscross. So that's what we're going to talk about today because that message, those stories, the inspiration, the lessons that you are living as an example and a model for others is what they're going to be talking about when we are to the great beyond, wherever that is. That's what they're going to remember. It's, and maybe, maybe the time in college, maybe that too. I don't know, that might have been a legacy, I don't know, for some of us rowdies it might be. But a holistic definition of legacy is being genuinely grounded in offering yourself, making a meaningful, lasting, and energizing contribution to humanity by serving a cause that is greater than your own. Raise your hand if that feels kind of good. Does that feel good to you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So today, we are gonna take the time to hear from some educators and some, edu I should say, educational leaders 
throughout the state. And we're going to hear about their six word legacies before you get the opportunity to write yours today in this room. So excited. So excited. All right. So let me just click and pray. I've got Mike back there. He's going to hook me up if we need anything else. Because she called me when that was all done. <laughs> and she said, Sue, I want to start a chapter of Educators Rising in New Hampshire, and I want you to be the director because I want your energy behind this. And so she sucked me right into the vortex. We have friends like that, don't we? And she sucked me in, and I'm so glad she did. Uh, this is a bulletin board in her classroom of uh, her students who are at Concord Regional Technical Center learning to become educators in any sense of the word. And so there's these really cool programs. I, I did not know about these and probably until about mm, 10 years ago. Throughout the state, in high schools and career tech centers, people are teaching people how to become educators in high school. So they don't have to wait until college to figure it out. So these kids are getting a taste of all of this goodness now. And 
this is some of their, here are some of their six word legacies. There are only abilities, not disabilities. Find your path with my guidance. Little hands with a big heart. She saw the world in color. So some of them are more general and some of them are more specific to the field of education, but one of the really impactful activities that she has them do is to create these legacies because they're just at the beginning of exploring the field of education and whatever that's going to look like for them. So I wanted to share not only uh, educational leaders currently in the, throughout the state, but also think people that'll, that'll be coming up the pipe soon. The mission of Educators Rise New Hampshire is to grow our own teachers right here in New Hampshire because so many leave the state once they get their degree. And uh, that's one of our many missions. But I didn't know I was going to be talking about this, but I am going to write it down, have you write it down if you would like more information. It's ed educatorsrisingnh.org is the website. You can find out more there. And we're only three years old. So we're just, we're just toddlers right now coming into our preschool years as, a, as an organization. My personal, I'm sorry, my professional legacy is actually my logo. Learning is contagious, pass it on. And whatever that learning is, because we do that all the time. You learn something. This summer you learned something from a friend. They told you about this great travel experience that's all inclusive and it's in, give me a good place. Jamaica. Jamaica. Nice. So there's this great opportunity in Jamaica, and oh my gosh, you, you would love it, you would love it. And so all of a sudden, that good old internet, we get on the internet, and we start researching and finding it. And that's, that's the, those are the seeds that are planted about everything that comes into our brain. We're learning it from somewhere, we're seeing it, we're hearing it, we're experiencing it. So, then we get to pass it on in whatever way works. So what I would like you to do right now is I would like you to think about your six-word legacy. And I know it's short and sweet, so it really, it really guides you to get clarity. So this is an unhelpful thought that I had when I was learning how to ski. First thing I had to do when I learned how to ski is get a totally cool outfit, because you know, we need that, right? <laughs> Gotta look good on the slopes even though I don't want to do it. Um, I, I went to Gunstock, and those of you who know who are familiar with Gunstock, up on Penny Patu lift. Somehow I got off the lift and I had my family with me, and they were telling me how to ski. And so I'm listening to them, and I'm, oh, and it was not pretty, and I wiped out. And I thought, are you kidding me? I am too old for this. I'm not strong enough. I can't do this. How do you think that made me feel inside if I was thinking those thoughts? Just yell out some words. Discouraged. Mad. What else? So, Embarrassed. Un un unable. And so what did I probably do? What was my action? Took, took my skis off. Where did I go? Yeah! You know me. You so know me. The lodge. I went to the lodge, right? But then, I had the same exact thing happen, but I had helpful thinking. My helpful thinking was... I got off the lift, I wiped out, still wasn't happy about it, but I thought, you know what, everybody falls when they learn how to ski. It's all right. Look, I'm looking around. There's people with a lot more experience in age, in years than me. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. So I was thinking that. What do you think, how did, how did I feel? Enabled. Enabled. Encouraged. Encouraged. You ripped yourself of shame. Yeah, I was feeling hopeful. And so what did I probably do? Got instructions. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> From somebody other than my family, seriously, take a lesson, Sue. Come on. But what happened was I achieved my outcome, but I had to have the helpful thinking versus the unhelpful thinking. We have both. It's like, remember that movie, Sybil? She had 16 personalities. I think most of us have at least two. Okay, so you're, I know it's okay, and back and forth and back and forth. And I just share that because sometimes those unhelpful thinking, those unhelpful thoughts are, are guiding us where we don't want to go. Because whatever we focus on is what's going to expand. So when we focus on how much we stink and how much we can't do this, that's what's going to grow. 
So real briefly, there's a bunch of affirmations, and I, affirmations and mantras, the, the differences, the, how they're used. So affirmations, there's a bunch of them. You can pick and choose, you can make your own. What would work to help support your legacy? These are just some that I copyrighted off the internet, copyright use, copyright use, no? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. And I actually stole that from somebody else, so I copyrighted the copyright expression. Um, but here are some ideas of affirmation. So what I would like to leave you with is the idea that every day we have a choice to consciously be the change and live our legacy to make an impact. And in times now to be the change, it just makes sense. And so I'm gonna encourage you to flip that card over and leave with a plan. A plan of action, because small change adds up. Think about all the change in the change jar. And then you bring it to the bank, and you bring it, oh my gosh, I can buy a plane ticket with all that change. That's cool. So I'd like you to jot down a, a three, two, one, or a one, two, three, as they call it, exit slip. One small behavior change that will create a ripple. And it can be something as simple as leaving your office door open. It's just an energy thing. Pick something, some tiny small change that will help to create a ripple and shift what's going on and will support your legacy. Number two is what is an affirmation or two affirmations that would support you? That would be helpful thinking. And the third, what are three resources to explore? And those resources can be people, they can be that, that Google thing that's so popular. And it can be books, book experiences. But I'd like you to really, if, even if you don't write it down right this second, jot down these three areas. Because when we leave with a plan, it's going to help us get to where we want to be. And where you want to be is, I hope, living your legacy. Because what are we waiting for, seriously? Huh? Tick, tick, tick. Morbid but true. You gotta do it now. Be the change. Make the impact.